security of license is sin. So we know it's by grace that we are saved. Great great grace. All I hear about is grace. Yes. As opposed to Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. So yes. It's not by works, but it is by grace. The most frequent objection to the doctrine of eternal security is that it is supposedly allows people to live any way they want and they still be saved. Well, this is actually true. I mean, people could go murder, gang rape, do all sorts of things. You're losing, you're going to have your internal, your physical life cut short. You're going to lose rewards in heaven. But you will be still be sealed until the day of redemption. There shouldn't be a question. The only thing is it'll kill your witness. So people will be like, well, that's how a believer is living versus a non-believer. What's the difference? So that's something to keep in mind. While this may be technically true, it is not true in reality. A person who has truly been redeemed by Jesus will not live a life characterized by continuous sin. So... Again, we, we can live this life, but we won't because we're always going to be like, the cross is going to be in our mind. Just like, Jesus loved us so much, he came from heaven to earth and died on a cross for our sins. So it's like, <clears throat> do you really, really want to do this bad deed that goes against his law? Knowing that we took that hammer and just whacked that nail right in to him? Or are we going to just go like, well, yeah, he's, he gave us a chance. Now, there'll be some people who be like silly and say, well, how can my good deeds be like a dirty tampon? Why can't I just accept reality and try to be a humble person? Like, their good deeds can outbalance their bad deeds. We must draw a distinction between how... And Christians should live in what a person must do in order to receive salvation. The Bible is clear. Salvation is by grace alone. Through faith alone in Jesus Christ alone. This is John 3.16. So anyone who's like saying, I'm a Christian, but when God said, whosoever shall believe, he really technically didn't mean whosoever. He meant whosoever shall believe and keep my law. Whosoever shall believe in not take the mark of the beast. Whosoever shall blank, blank, blank. No? I mean, most definitions of John 3.16 kind of clearly says, Whosoever shall believe. Period. Will. Not, well, hey, also you look at the KJV, so it should. <coughs> Have eternal life. What does the word will mean to you? Does it mean like, well, it's a 50-50, let me flip... A coin, make sure I'm got all my T's crossed, I's dotted. And then, what does eternal mean to you? Does eternal mean internally conditional? And those two words kind of clash with each other, I would think. So, I'm just trying to understand where you guys are coming from when you're like, well, unsaved, always saved is a doctrine of devils. It's like, it is true that when, when a person is saved, they use it as a license to sin. Well, yeah, they do, they could, but <laughs> really, <laughs> they won't. There's a difference between could, would, and would. And it seems like we keep wanting to do a whole lot of double speak with these people. <laughs> the moment a person truly believes in Jesus Christ, he or she is saved and secure in that salvation. It is unbiblical to say that salvation is received by faith but that then we are to maintain by works and how many people are like well I'm afraid because I lost my temper I'm going to lose my salvation <laughs> wake up people if you believe the gospel that's not what's going to happen it is the insanely good news the apostle Paul addresses that issue in Galatians 3.3 3, when he asked, Are you so foolish after beginning with the Spirit? Are you now trying to attain? Your, 
your goal by human effort? If we are saved by faith, are contained and secured by faith. Yeah, that guy almost caused me to lose my salvation because he was so foul mouthed. Ask him, are you reading Galatians 3.3? 3? How did you lose that salvation? If we are saved by faith, our salvation is also maintained and secured by faith. We cannot earn our salvation. Therefore, neither can we earn the maintenance of our salvation. It is God who maintains our salvation. Jude 24. So you're calling God a liar when you say he cannot maintain your salvation. Who shall pluck you, the believer out of God's hand? It is God's hand that holds us firmly in his grasp. It is God's love that nothing separates us from. Any denial of internal security and it's answered by our own efforts, or what I say, avoiding things. I mean, like the mark of the beast is not going to happen until after the tribulation. So, and even if we are here, he's not going to give us anything above what we can maintain our He'll always give us a way out. He may, if we're forced to take the mark, he may call you home early. I mean, <clears throat> do you guys not trust Heavenly Father? This is completely antithetical to salvation by grace. We are saved because of Christ's merits, not our own. Romans 4, 3-8. To claim we must obey God's word to live a holy life to maintain our is saying that Jesus' death was not sufficient to pay the penalty of our sins. So yes, anyone who's bringing you another gospel, it's like, well, we can lose our salvation. The exorcisms of demonic spirits. We're the fallen end times harbinger. We're not to even eat with those people. Jesus' death was absolutely sufficient to pay for all our sins. Past, present, and future. Pre-salvation and post-salvation. Does this mean a Christian can live any way he wants to and still be saved? This is essentially a hypothetical question because the Bible makes it clear that a true Christian will not live any way he wants to. See, that's where the devil speak. It's like, no, we should not commit murder, but if we do murder, <laughs> it's documented, but we should not. That's... That's why people are splitting hairs when they don't need to be splitting hairs. <laughs> Christians are new to creations. Christians demonstrate the fruit of the Spirit, not the acts of the flesh. Clearly states that a true Christian will not live in continual sin in response to the accusations that grace promotes sin. The Apostle Paul declared, What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Eternal security is not a license to sin, rather it is the security of knowing that God's love is guaranteed for those who trust in Christ. <laughs> That's very true. Eternal security is not a license to sin. How many people are like, well, you believe in that eternal security thing. You can be a bad guy now. Well, eternal security is not a license to sin. So... Why do you guys, they're like, well, it's doorship conditional salvation, or it's false. We cannot accept reality. Then you have not believed on Jesus. You follow another gospel. Eternal security is not a license to sin. Rather, is the security of knowing that God's love is guaranteed for those who trust in Christ. No one understands God's tremendous gift of salvation accomplishes the opposite of giving a license to sin. How could anyone, knowing the price Jesus Christ has paid for us, go on to a life of sin? How could anyone, knowing the price Jesus Christ paid for us, go on to a life of sin? How could anyone, knowing the price Jesus Christ paid for us, Go on to a life of sin. So see, when we know this, that statement is so true. I don't get why people are like, well, 
Jesus, thank you for only paying 90% of our sin debt on the cross when you died. Because we're just so much better than you. we got to rely on our own human efforts. I mean, thank you for giving your percentage of the cross. But we understand you couldn't really save us. So, here. <sighs> like, read this. Do you guys not get how lordship and conditional security is blasphemy? How can anyone knowing the price Jesus Christ paid for... How could anyone, knowing the price Jesus Christ paid for us, go on to a life of sin? How could anyone who understands God's unconditional and guaranteed love for those who believe that love and throw it back in God's face? <laughs> I mean, this is this is so true. And people are like, well, I can lose my salvation. I do know, God. <laughs> it's like. You laugh and then you know, you got do one of these laugh cries because it's like, how could anyone who understands God's unconditional and guaranteed love for those who believe take that love and throw it back in God's face? Such a person is demonstrating not that eternal security has given him a license to sin, but rather that he or she has not truly experienced salvation through Jesus Christ. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or knows him. 1 John 3 6. So, eternal security is the answer. <laughs> Anyone who tells you it's conditional security is the answer. It's time to get off their bus. I don't care if they were from New Jersey originally and currently have moved to Texas.